Hello everybody, Isabella from Pride Time here and today we are looking at a Georgian writing habit or rather a form of a writing habit. Um, this one is based on the pocket of grass fire from, if I remember correctly, um, that would be 1746, 48, something like that. So obviously at the time habits became much more popular. Um, and lots of them were kept in a not very pragmatic manner, which is basically what this one here is. It's a, a little bit um, a fashionable take on a masculine writing habit, I think. So let's start with the layers. I already have my space on a lacy chemise. And I've got my mules, which I'm not needing. So I'll go for these. And we actually change this one later to longer boots as well for proper riding because this I think we just catch at things you don't want to catch. So usual space, um, which are quite beneficial for riding because they keep you nice and straight. The only thing that you may have problem with would be the peak, but because you don't do a lot of jumping at the era and just the jumps. When you do them, sort of more stationary, hop. So it's not much of a problem, it doesn't really interfere with your sitting side saddle. Let's put a little bit of an under petticoat. This can go on space or under space, up to you. You can sort of chuck it underneath. And I've got my pockets, but because I have pocket hoops, they serve as huge pockets, so there's no need for me to put additional pockets inside. I can, if I don't think to lug around too much, but I do need to. Just have a look, I can put it all together without getting tangled. The hooks are all hand stitched in silk and are typical of the era. Again, they would most likely be dropped for riding. I mean, just Come on, you cannot be sick with this kind of song. I mean, you can sit, in, but maybe not tight, so you just take a little bit too much. Right. So here they are. They have slits here, so you can put a lot of stuff here, as you've seen in other videos. There's nothing suspicious hanging on with that this time. And God. Next bit is probably the curved skirt. And this one hardly seems to be suitable for a riding skirt. It's a light brocade. And then the original painting, you can see it's possibly painted on very nice sort of Leonard silk brocade as well, which is not ideal for being on a horse, really. So I think this particular habit was much more a fashion statement than a pragmatic and practical item of clothing. This is definitely not very practical. And I'm flashing my boots all the time, just not plenty of long day. But we are there. Obviously, you would have, if you were that posh, you would have servants to help you out. If you were that posh, you have family to help you out. Right, this is going to be crazy, but I think we are mostly in. Now, I've got pocket slits here in my petticoat. One second. There you go. So if I really need to reach for something in summer skirts, I can. So that's a benefit. Next bit is stomacher. This one is reasonably long and it's unboned, so it's quite soft. It doesn't need to be much more to it. And I'm just going to fill it, hopefully centrally, to my space. Okay, 
Okay, so that's one site, hopefully. It's really handy that those have little loops for stitching. You don't have to go through the expensive fabric of the stomacher. This might be a little bit too long, that should be fine. And you can just go directly. And it sits on. Just the right length. It's a lot of to sit on a horse. <laughs> And the habit, or rather habit jacket, which is a little bit blingy. Right. On the painting, you can see that the decoration comes to a central point, and there are ornamental buttons, but I don't think they're practical buttons. So this one doesn't have practical buttons, but actually it has. Buttons and loops, just to hold it shut, but it closes with a lacing strip inside. Now, let's see if I can do it to a white wonky shoulder. I've done it, sort of. Ta-da! Right, losing away, but let's deal with it. I've got a long silk lace. And originally, I think either a lacing strip was utilised, or very likely it was just hooked and ice or pinned edge to edge. As you do see very clearly, it's edge to edge on the painting, and I do have just some loops to simply secure the edges from gaping too much. The fabric of this one is silk velvet on silk velvet backing, so it was quite a rare find. And although not the cheapest, it wasn't actually that expensive either. Do the mirror really. I'm not trying to see over the boobs, but that's light. As you can see, the lacing really sort of holds it nicely. Very often, even if the buttons are functional, you can have a lacing on then you just to take strain from the buttons. That's the basically the genesis. It's it's been used in Elizabethan uh, bodices. The front edge was used in mantuas as well. And later on, you can see some lacing in Victorian bodices like that as well, including um, a waist, which is basically um, a remnant of the lacing and just taking straight off the buttons. You see, if I can tie it off here, it needs any further, once it needs any further lacing. Hopefully, up to the way. With little loops that will secure the button. You can ignore the loops somewhere here. The lace for this one is quite a lot of lace. There are about four different antique laces, metallic laces, more than worthy, truly. Um, here which I've been sort of squirreling for the last, I think, four years now. So finally, I've managed to get something out of them. Let me see if that's not clear. I think we are. Not really have a mirror here, so that's difficult. But the coat has a very masculine back, so it, it's been cut according to masculine um, jackets from the Fira Producer Corp. The front has been changed, obviously, to fit over the hoop, so the front skirts were cut differently and separately 
the um, details on and pattern for this pack for this habit will be in my um, equestrian dressmaker book. So that's that's what I made in the first place. Now let me just patch up my makeup a bit. Maybe there's some here. Oh no, I didn't bring my makeup. No, I'm touching up makeup. I thought I'd put my powder in it. In that case, simple decoration. And I think we are set. Now, as you can see, it's not really the most practical writing here. You know, with your thick on it, you're all exposed to the elements and tricks and anything else that's just flying around when you're on horseback. But it sort of works here. So that's what I'm sticking with. It is quite a spectacular look, I must say. Loads of fabric, I mean, loads of fabric in the end. I'll be using it for shooting or writing. Oops. And the painting has a tiny little miniature triton hat, but well, I've got my proper hat or proper riding. None of that miniature business. Let's see if it fits on my head. It might not. <laughs> I need a hat then. That's the problem when you have. Wigs. <laughs> Normally I would have my own hair done with pomade and powder a lot, but we are in a historical building and I don't really want to leave the powder anywhere around. <laughs> it's, it's not that they want us to shoot it again. But I think writing class and we're done. Let's go for a walk and let's see if we can find a horse. <laughs>